So last time, again, we introduced our fixed second law, our PD, our partial differential equation. Why is it partial differential equation? Because concentration is a function of several independent variables, i.e. in this particular example, x and t. So we wanted to switch that and we introduced this uh, variable eta, which is x over square root of 40 t, and we changed our PD to an ODE. So an ODE, ordinary, ordinary differential equation, just with uh, basically derivative with respect to one variable, concentration is a function of eta. So let's go back and let's solve this problem. So now that we're working with eta, and eta is equal to x over square root of 4 dt, let's go ahead and solve and set up the boundary conditions for this diffusion couple problem to figure out how we are going to write the concentration of our one material. So what is the concentration uh, of our one material at minus infinity? Let's say that this is a diffusion couple. Again, it's a huge material. Um, so let's assume, again, because we're thinking of diffusion at the atomistic length scale. So we're looking at 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meter jumps, approximately. So 10 to the minus 10, 10 to the minus 9 meter jumps. But if this diffusion couple is, let's say, it's millimeters long, which again, could be, you know, oftentimes it'll be much longer, that's still a seven order of magnitude change. So if we can make this assumption that essentially we're dealing with a infinite or a semi-infinite material. So the diffusion across here is going to be essentially semi-infinite. So all the way, if this is my x is equal to zero, at minus infinity, so what is my concentration at, again, because I'm now rewriting instead of x and t, just concentration as a function of theta. So what is my concentration at minus infinity? It's minus infinity because x equals minus infinity. Well, it's just going to be basically CL, or you could kind of just call this 1, right? I'm pure material 1. What's the concentration at positive infinity? Well, that's just going to be, what's the concentration at positive infinity? It's just going to be 0, because there's no, basically no material 1 that's going to travel all the way over to this side, because we have to travel an infinite distance. So let's go ahead and let's solve this in Mathematica. So let's go ahead and define eta. Hey, you can kind of go through. This is, uh, I'll post this notebook if people would like. Um, so let's go ahead and clear eta. And then let's go ahead and solve our differential equation. So you can see I'm taking the first derivative, so concentration with respect to eta, plus 2. Again, all I'm doing is let's go back into here. Because this is our ODE. So our ODE is this plus this 2 uh, eta right here. So we're just going to have to move that guy over. Actually, let's go ahead and let's change. Actually, there's a little bit of a, yeah, no, it's right here. So we're multiplying this here. We moved it over here, set it equal to 0. So at minus infinity, our concentration is 1. At infinity, it's 0. So let's go ahead and voila. So we have C eta is equal to 1 over 1 minus earth eta. Again, we're just doing a differential solve. So we have our differential equation here, and we have our two boundary conditions here and here. And we can solve. That's it. That's all we have to do and deal with and work with. So let's go ahead and compare this solution to what we found, or actually what the notes kind of show mathematically. So let's go ahead and plug in. So we said in this expression, our CL is equal to 1, our CR is equal to 0. So what does this expression look like? It's in terms of f, uh, c of x of t, because we could also go ahead. So this is going to be 1 half plus, uh, or actually minus, earth x over square root of 4 dt. So 1 half minus 1 half minus earth eta, because all we're going to do is substitute back in for eta. That's it. That's all we have to kind of do and work with. So let's go ahead and we could kind of plug in this expression here. So let's go ahead and we're going to substitute in for this. Oops, let me go ahead and paste this. So earth, and then we know that eta is basically this right here. So let's go ahead and down, substitute this in. So substituting in for eta, and let's go ahead and let's see how this, uh, let's say that d is 4 times 10 to the minus 14. Exactly. Just plugging in a value for here. So now I can go ahead, plug this in, and we can see how does this expression uh, change. So minus 1,000. 
or actually this is time, excuse me. So we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna go from 500 micrometers to minus 500 micrometers. So I'm just gonna paste this in here. So, oops, it doesn't like, oops. There's a, a value it does not like. So let's do a time of equal to one. So now let's see how this looks like. Kind of makes sense, right? So as time goes, you know, infinite. So initially our starting point, concentration one here, nothing here. And as we increase time, again, it starts to even out, right? Materials flowing again, way over here, we're still at one, but materials starting to kind of increase and flow into the other side. So that's the beauty of kind of this expression. So that's how the concentration profile evolves, right? Here, time equals, you know, zero. All the concentration of one is on the left, nothing on the right, but as time increases, the concentration of one starts to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. But if I change my scale, let's say I look at it in terms of, let's do it 500 millimeters. You can kind of see how the concentration profile is a little bit weaker. It's hard to even see the difference. So you can see the scales that we're dealing with here. So very, 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 very small length scales. So uh, basically that diffusion, that's why it's kind of a reasonable assumption, right? it's not even kind of really changing too much at a time of a million. Uh, if we're just looking at a 500 micrometer or basically a thousand micrometer uh, kind of lane scale. So that's kind of the key idea here and why it's reasonable to kind of make that assumption of a semi-infinite or, you know, an infinite solution. Um, we're going to do another example next, but one of the questions you might be asking is, uh, what do we do? Again, we don't have to do this by hand. Uh, exactly. Use Mathematica, set up those boundary conditions. So, one of the questions you might be asking is, well, when is it appropriate or when does our solution start to break down? When can we make this semi-infinite approximation? Well, your solution will be valid as long as the length, the length of your, wherever you're kind of diffusing is greater than 10 times square root of dt. That's when this is still valid. So your solution is valid up to this point. That's it. So next time we are gonna do uh, one quick example. Uh, looking at the diffusion of a species into a semi-infinite solid or the surface concentration. See you in the next video. Thanks.